Uh, first, I have uh, no uh, commercial uh, conflicts of interest. So what I'm going to be doing here today is kind of a little bit more practical approach, looking at some of the measurements, imaging techniques, and protocols that we should be considering when uh, evaluating patients for TAVRs and providing information to our uh, cardiology and cardiothoracic colleagues. Recently, as everyone is well aware, the transcatheter aortic valvular replacement has been utilized in high-risk surgical patients and has really decreased their uh, mortality from all cause by about 20%. As part of this pre-procedural evaluation, in addition to echocardiography, CT has really become a mainstay in their evaluation as far as directing the type of approach as well as helping them size devices. We do provide vascular measurements as well as multiple measurements of the uh, annulus as well as other uh, anatomic structures that I'll go throughout this talk. And what really we need to consider is, is CT is not a replacement for echocardiography in these patients because echo is used integrally within the procedure itself to help position the device, but really it's an adjunct to help direct the surgical technique or procedural technique as well as help do measurements pre-procedure. So what we need to consider uh, when doing these uh, pre-procedural TAVRs is really developing a protocol that will help us provide really reproducible measurements of not just the aorta, the aortic annulus, and perifer peripheral vascular structures, but it really needs to be a practical approach that will address all the needs of the clinicians. And what I'd like to really stress here is each individual clinical cardiologist that does these in surgeon, they're going to ask for measurements to be done subtly different. I know there's a lot of things throughout the literature of how measurements are made, but I've just, in my experience, have found that they're going to ask for measurements to be subtly different. What we need to consider, though, is the aortic annular measurements, and usually the cut point would be anything greater than 18 millimeters is going to help them go forward with this procedure. We need to consider peripheral disease, whether it be left ventricular thrombus or atherosclerotic disease that's going to direct how they approach, whether it's a left ventricular approach or peripheral vascular approach, uh, configurations of the annulus as well as the amount of calcification within the annulus, and then peripheral vascular measurements, again, seven millimeters kind of being the cut point for this, although, again, these numbers are in flux. So I'm going to quickly go over protocols, both with contrast, without contrast, and we also do at our institution non-contrast protocols to help the cardiologist size devices. Basically, a non-contrast protocol that we use is pretty much just a non-contrast chest, abdomen, and pelvis doing one millimeter reconstructions. And what we will do is basically measure the inner diameter of the vessels, if we can see it, if they're not calcified, and the annular diameters to give them rough estimations of what they're getting into. As far as the post-contrast, we have recently been pushing gated studies. Um, basically, and as you can see from these two images, the non-gated non and gated, really looking at the gated images in uh, mid-diastolic mid -diastolic phase, we get really nice anatomic detail. We can get really good reproducible measurements and see very easily compared to the non-gated non studies, the attachment of the valvular leaflets, evaluation of the outflow tract. Our gated TAVR protocol of the chest, we do also do an abdominal phase that's non-gated with these. We are conscious to uh, radiation exposure to the patient, so we will do dose modulation, ECG modulation. We will lower our KV and kind of lower our MAs relative to a coronary CTA um, using about 100 cc's of contrast um, and basically injecting at 45 cc's a second. Abdominal component, again, we will set up a separate range uh, without a delay in acquisition, um, without any overlap, but it will be non-gated. The other component of this that we have done in very specific select individuals, we actually will do just the pelvic vessels with um, a arterial catheter that they'll place in the cath lab to, um, if they're really considering a peripheral vascular approach. So we'll dilute uh, 10 mLs of contrast and 40 mLs of saline and inject at 4 to 5 cc's per second off of the uh, descending aorta to really get nice vascular evaluation and effectively the patient will get less than 10, 10 mLs of contrast. We also 
have done, especially in patients with rapid heart rates who are in uh, AFib with rapid response, will do a non-gated protocol um, with a fast pitch in order to get good evaluation of the vascular structures. What are the measurements that we're looking at uh, that really help our cardiology colleagues? First and foremost, we spend a fair amount of time looking at the aortic annulus, doing a medial to lateral and AP diameter, as well as area of the annulus, measuring the sinus of El Salva. Um, they really need to know the distance from the annulus to the coronary artery origins um, for positioning of the device, as well as looking at the aortic configuration if it's really tortuous or dilated. Oftentimes, they may not be able to make uh, the, the different turns, at least from a femoral approach, uh, with the uh, prosthetic device. In doing the aortic measurements first and foremost with the annulus. We're looking at the attachment of the leaflets is where we're doing our measurements, the annulus itself. We do do a double oblique NPR in order to lay out the annulus. So what we will do is we will uh, generate um, from coronals and sagittals, setting up an imaging plane that goes through the attachment of the valvular leaflets, both in the AP and medial to lateral directions through the attachments, and it gives us a nice configuration of the aortic valvular annulus, whether it's a round or oval configuration, but it also allows us to look for any calcifications uh, within the annulus itself and with on the aortic valvular leaflets, which does provide prognostic information to the cardiologists um, because of post-procedural aortic insufficiency or risk of uh, annual rupture, and some of this data has been presented either in posters or throughout uh, lectures here earlier. With the annual measurements, as I kind of alluded to, we're measuring at the level of the leaflet attachments medial to lateral. So what this does is this allows us to generate the maximum and minimum diameters of the annulus as well as through the annulus itself looking at the uh, diameter, which is very important for them in sizing the device. We do similar measurements also with the um, non-contrast studies. Again, in the non-contrast, we also get a very nice look at the degree of calcification of the annulus as well as aortic valve, which is important information for our cardiology uh, colleagues. And what we'll do, again, is through the annulus itself, measure the best we can uh, anterior to posterior medial to lateral the uh, annulus. Why are these um, aortic measurements important and what does it add over and above what we see with echocardiography? Oftentimes what we found is the diameters that we measure with CT are larger than what are generated with echocardiography. Again, a lot of this has to do with the ability to image in multiple planes and put the information in multiple planes. Also, CT, we have found that actually will change the sizing of the device up in up to 20% of the cases, which is very helpful for our colleagues. And we have noticed that there is decrease in post-procedural aortic insufficiency using CT versus echo to um, size the device. It's about 19% versus 31% or 20% versus 30% roughly. Um, however, we haven't really any, found any difference in rupture of the annulus using uh, CT, at least to date. What we're trying to achieve, basically, with all the measurements of the annulus is to have a nice fitting uh, prosthetic valvular device, that there's no gaps between the device and the annulus, as well as no covering of the origin of the coronary arteries. In addition, what are we looking for for the aorta? Well, we want to provide a 3D presentation and measurements that allow them to select the approach as well as the device sizing. They need to know if there's any dissections or arthromas or any bypass grafts that might impact their approach. So we are going to give measurements of the annulus, again, medial to lateral above the valve plane, as well as the sinotubular junction as well as the ascending aorta, as well as three-dimensional representations of the aorta. Our cardiologists at times also like us to provide a 3D representation of the valve planes or the valvular leaflets in the same plane, simulating what you would see on a cardiac cath. So we have the right cusp, 
the left cusp and the non-coronary cusp in the plane that provides the measurements of the II that they is a starting point for them to help position uh, for the placement of the device. Again, as I alluded to earlier, measurements from the valvular leaflet attachment to the uh, uh, coronary ostea, both for the right and the left coronary arteries. And you want this ideally to be greater than 15 millimeters so they're not going to be covered by the device. Moving on from the aorta to the iliac vessels, which is another important part of evaluating the structures, is knowing what is the, di the inner diameter of the vessel. Not the outer wall, but the inner diameter, either from calcium or inner wall to the other side or other calcium. And we want these ideally to be seven millimeters or greater. In addition, we provide distributions of uh, calcium as well as the vessel configuration. Are they tortuous or not? Because the more tortuous, the more calcified, the more likely a femoral vascular approach may not be ideal. So what we'll do is draw a center line through the aorta as well as the right and left vessels, which gives us a nice uh, curved NPR. And what we'll do is throughout the course of the vessels, take measurements at the narrowest portions of the common iliac internal as well as exter external and femoral vessels, make, noting that everything is greater than seven millimeters and we want the inner diameter of the vessel. Oftentimes, it'll be really difficult if you have a very tortuous configuration of the iliac vessels. You actually will not be able to give a curved NPR as in this case. We cannot, because the vessel's curling back on themselves, we don't get a nice curved NPR. Here's the 3D representation in that patient. We see that basically the left iliac, uh, external iliac, basically does a U-turn. So it comes down, does a 90-degree turn, another 90-degree turn back upon itself, which in this particular case with some of the calcium would not be ideal for a femoral vascular approach because you're not going to make a 180-degree turn with the device. We can also do similar measurements on non-contrast, measuring from inner calcium to inner calcium. In this case, uh, the narrow point was about five millimeters, making it unfavorable for a right femoral vascular approach. Same thing with the calcium. We get a layout and distribution of the calcium. The more calcified, the more likely they're going to have complications. They're going to have dissections. They're going to have throdistal emboli and thrombi from the calcifications. So if there's a lot of calcifications, our uh, surgical colleagues will actually go through a ventricular approach. That's kind of a global overview of what we're looking for to provide an information to our uh, surgical and cardiology colleagues, looking at the annulus measurements, looking at the aorta. Keeping in mind that each of the operators is going to want slightly different measurements based upon how they were trained and what they're seeing in the uh, cardiac cath lab. So we need to be flexible in the measurements, but what we want to do is provide, you know, consistent, reliable measurements so they can provide, you know, repeated good um, outcomes with their placement of the uh, vascular devices. So thank you.